So let's take a look at how to train StyleGAN uh, 2-ADA inside of Colab. Um, so I have a Colab notebook here that I've been building up. Uh, it might be slightly edited by the time you look at this, or you know, if you come back to this a week after I've recorded this, there might be some new updates to it. So just keep an eye on that. Um, I'll link to this to the video description just for folks to find. Um, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, set this up to run TensorFlow 1. Uh, StyleGAN 2 doesn't work with TensorFlow 2. And then uh, while we've got this set, set up, let's take a look at what GPU we have available to us. So usually it's a V100 or a P100, especially if you're in Colab Pro. If you're not on Pro, you might get a K80, which is going to be pretty slow. I probably don't recommend that. Um, but a V100 or a P100 is fine. So let's say I have a P100. Um, a V100 is like sort of hitting the lottery. It's much faster. Um, but a P100 is going to be totally fine for this, especially for this demo, essentially. Um, so next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we uh, mount our Google Drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, and it looks like I'm already mounted here. So um, yeah, so that's fine. Uh, if you run this cell, you'll need to go through a couple steps in order to mount your drive. Once it's finished, um, drive will show up here. Um, so the way this repo works or the way I've got this uh, notebook set up is that all of your uh, code and repos and data sets and outputs are all saved to drive. Um, that way it saves uh, basically it's sort of a backup system. Um, the way Colab works, it will stop running after about 20 hours if you're on Colab Pro and about 10 if you're um, not on Pro. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that when the machine stops, we don't lose all of our work. So we're going to save it to drive. Um, the next cell here is basically going to set us up. So if you've already run this the very first time, or sorry, the second time, um, all of your code will already be set up. Uh, if you run this for the very first time, you're going to need to install some things. So this uh, cell, if you just run it, will basically check to see if uh, this file already exists. If it does, we can just CD into that um, repo folder. If it doesn't, um, we can go ahead and install everything. So we'll go ahead and run this. And because I've already got it installed, it's just moving directly into the correct folder. Um, this cell here, I probably won't run, um, just because it takes a little bit of time. Uh, because I'm making lots of updates to these files, um, this is set up to basically check for the latest updates. Um, so I installed this last week. I am consistently making updates to my own repo, um, and this allows me to do a git pull just to check out the latest files. So um, I do recommend for folks who are you know checking this to probably run this, you know, over every week or whatever. Um, I'm trying to keep the Slack updated with what I've added or not added or other things. Um, so I may just remind folks to to do a git pull or a, a checkout on the latest files. Um, so I'm going to skip this file. What I do want to do next is I want to uh, convert my data set to TF records. So um, I'm going to assume that for whatever reason you are working with the very first data set and you want to basically upload. There's two options you've got here. You can upload a zip file directly to Colab, which is what I've done here, or you can um, upload it to Google Drive and then just open it and use it from there. Either of those works fine. I'm going to show you the upload and zip, uploaded zip version. Um, this is a data set of about 3,500 images, all 1024 by 1024. So we'll go ahead and run this cell. Um, what I've done is I've just copied the path here and pasted it in here. And then when I run this cell, it will unzip it. And unzipping should be pretty, pretty fast. So unless you have a ton of images, it should be good. So we've got our folder here. So the next step we need to do is we actually need to um, convert these to a TF records file, which is a format that TensorFlow can read. So I'm just going to, again, copy my path here. Um, and I'm going to give this file a name. So because I'm, it's already named sort of the, the data set name, I'll just leave this as is. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to just name it glitch. That'll be fine. Um, make sure that whatever you use here is, a, is the name you refer to everywhere else. And I'll show you the next step where, where you need to make sure that is refer, referred to. Um, but it's pretty important that whatever you name your data set name, you know what it is, and you can reference it. So all you need to do is edit these two lines, these setup variables, and then this third line uh, down here actually takes those variables and uh, runs the script to generate these. Now I should say, um, this process is pretty slow, especially on Colab, I believe, because Colab is also syncing this content to um, Google Drive, which I think is just kind of a slow process over the Google file stream. So in this case, uh, this is probably going to take about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'll see that I didn't get an error yet, which is great. Um, if you do get errors, drop me a note on the YouTube video and I can maybe help. Um, I know what some of them mean and some of them I don't, so I'll do what I can. Um, but essentially, you'll convert your to this data set. I'm going to stop the video now, and then we'll pick up again um, once this is completed. It looks like I was about right, about 15 minutes to generate this. Um, so you'll see that uh, if it completed correctly, it should just say added. X number of images, so however many images in your data, data set should be added. 
Um, from here, we're pretty much ready to start training. Um, so there's two cells here that I think are worth checking out. First off is the dash dash help cell, um, which if, if you run will basically tell you every single training parameter you need under the sun. Um, it is very long. Uh, there's lots of information here. Um, I just finished up a class uh, this week with some of my students and sort of walking them through all of this. And um, I'll probably release that video in the next couple weeks. So if you're really interested in that, keep an eye out for that. Um, in the meantime, you know, there's a ton of information here. Each of these uh, arguments comes with like sort of a little bit of information about what it is. There are also, I believe, some examples. Yeah, so there's just some examples here. Um, this is like the most basic uh, training of a custom data set you can come up with. Um, there are a couple other things here as well. Um, so definitely recommend reading through this. What I've done in this cell below is I've actually just set up sort of the most basic or like maybe what I would say are like the, the most necessary um, arguments to pass through. So the first thing is um, what's the name of your data set? So we're going to change this to be glitch because that is what I need my folder up above. Make sure that this matches, close this out, make sure that whatever is this here matches exactly, even especially if you have like capital letters, underscores, dashes, whatever, make sure this matches this exactly. If it doesn't, you're going to run into issues. Next, snapshot count. So I'd probably recommend for um, people using Colab or Colab Pro, you set it to maybe two, four, or eight. Um, because I'm on a P100, I'm going to set it to two uh, just because this runs a little bit slower. So I want to make sure I get my outputs from there. Um, next is should my images be mirrored left to right? I'm going to set that to be true. Should my ear images be mirrored uh, top to bottom? Because these are pretty abstract, this is fine. For many of you, you'll probably want to set um, mirrored left to right to be true and mirrored Y to be false. Um, I'm going to leave this to be true because for my images, it'll work. Uh, metric list. So uh, TLDR, I would just say set this to none. Um, if you know about metrics and you want to set the metrics, you can. Um, I believe it's like, I think the default is uh, FID 50K underscore full. Um, I'd have to double check that to be sure. But um, the one they also recommend in the paper is kid 50k full, I believe. Um, I'm going to set this to none because I don't really want to mess with um, running metrics because uh, especially on a P100, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to run metrics, which you know I only have 20 minutes to run this thing. So it's going to take up a little bit of time. Lastly is augmentations. So um, there's a lot of information here. Uh, the default is BGC. So if you're really interested in just using the default, I recommend this. Um, I have personally found that the C, which stands for color, um, can cause a lot of problems um, in my particular data, data sets. So I tend to default to BG now. This is sort of what I'm working with. Um, so I definitely recommend you know reading up on this and figuring out what you want. Um, BGC probably works fine if you have photographs. Um, if you have more illustrative work, I might recommend doing just BG. And the last and most important uh, variable to write in here is your resume from. So if you're starting on a brand new data set, I recommend setting it to F FHQ 1024. So what this is going to do is it's going to download the FFHQ data set and you are going to transfer learn off of this. Um, this is what I would recommend setting as the base for pretty much any model. Now, if let's say you've already trained other models or you're coming back to continue training on the same model, what you want to do instead is actually change this to be a pickle file path. So what I had here before, which was this, um, is I go you go into the results folder inside of your drive and you find whatever you know latest run you're looking for, and then you grab the latest pickle file from here and you paste that in. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to pick up training from that point and continue on from there. So uh, that is if you are continuing training or if you want to transfer learn off a model you've already done. Um, for many of my models, um, I just start with this, which is just to pull uh, FFHQ and train off that. I find it works perfectly fine. Don't worry about domains. Don't worry about other things. Just know that if you haven't, any, if you don't have any trained models, uh, this is probably what you want. Now, this is only for 1024 by 1024. If you have a 512 model, you want 512. If you have a 256 model, you want 256. Um, so right now, I believe StyleGAN only supports those sizes. Um, so I'm going to set this back to 1024. So all these variables add up to this training command. Now, if there are other commands in dash dash help that you want to play with, you can take those and paste them in here in this line. It'll totally work fine. Um, actually, you see that I did aug pipe. Yeah, I just need to clean this up a little bit, so we'll remove that. Um, cool. So this is already set up to go. So uh, I can just go ahead and run the cell. And there's a note here, you know, um, if this is your first time using Colab, uh, you do not want to close your uh, browser window. 
So closing a browser window will disconnect you. Um, so if you are using Colab Pro and you want to run this for 20 hours, um, you've got to leave your laptop open for 20 hours, or you've got to leave this browser window open for 20 hours. And I believe if your machine goes to sleep completely, it will also shut off. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, um, you leave this open. Now this is setting up some uh, file functionality that we need to have set up here. Um, it also sets, uh, there's this JSON right here. Um, if you're interested in just sort of seeing what all the variables that you passed in are or even the variables you don't know about. Um, so here you can see the augmentations that we're going to apply. So we're going to do an X flip. We're going to do a rotate 90. Um, I don't know what Xint is. Maybe that's just like a, a slight um, uh, X translation. And then scale, rotate. I'm not sure what N NISO is. Um, or X fraction. So um, I might have to look this up. <laughs> but essentially, these are the blit and the geometric changes. Um, and I tend, to, I, f I tend to find that they produce the best uh, updates to our model. So this is now, we're now spitting out our generator layers. We're spitting out our, our uh, discriminator layers. And we are setting up our export samples. So this will export our, um, our fakes and our real inits and uh, set up a couple other things for us. So we can actually go in and see as this process out. We'll go into my drive. We'll go into collab sg2 ada and we'll go into results and we will look at um, this one right here. So it's still setting up some files. A couple of these files will show up as soon as this is. Um, I'm going to just keep vamping for a little bit until this finishes and we get our very first. Um, output or just sort of the first uh, generating of ex examples. Um, setup does take about five to 10 minutes, so this will take a little bit of time. Um, I definitely recommend uh, keeping an eye on this. Um, Colab is pretty stable, but every once in a while, you know, personally for me, my internet uh, blips every once in a while and I can lose connection. So if you lose a connection, you just have to go back and set up your resume again. So you'll reconnect to the machine. Um, you'll grab that latest pickle file and just start over see how we're doing here. Okay, well, before my battery dies, I know this is going to set up and it's going to be working fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop on the video. Um, so we'll finish up this lesson. If you get an error message, let me know. I might be able to debug it, might not be. Um, I have seen most of the error messages, I think, out of training, um, so I'm happy to help. But um, that covers Colab. That was actually a pretty quick video in, in comparison to the Paperspace one. Um, but this should get you up and started. So uh, look out for a video on um, doing interpolations and image generation uh, in the near future. Um, and for now, that's it. So thanks again, and uh, I'll see you next time.